Good evening, St. Luke. This is Pastor Johnson here at the St. Luke Christian Church where God is with us seeking to save. God wants to use us to reach and touch someone else in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, that they may get to know him as Lord and Savior, not just eternal Savior, but one who delivers us in the progress and the process as we grow more and more into his image. This is God's day. He's made it and allowed us to see, and we thank God for it. There's much to pray about, and uh, we want to keep those who are on our prayer list uh, in prayer, my God, in prayer, people who have been double whammy, you know, families losing one, two, three people uh, from this um, deadly virus, um, and people still hesitant, ambivalent, and, and, and with the vaccine, when even even the facts are laid out that the uh, people who um, are getting hospitalized and in most, most critical care are those who are unvaccinated. And here and there, that data doesn't register to people at all relative to how we have to work together so that we can contain this contagious disease so it can stop mutating and changing and, and adjusting to its environment, getting strongholds here and there, and, and, and different variants coming up. We, we It's going to take a while to do this. Working together, it would take a while to do this. If we put everything else aside, you know, whatever it's politics, religion, whatever, put it all aside and focus on how we fight this virus to keep uh, more people in our families, more people in our um, communities in our uh, counties, cities, counties, state and nation and world alive. If we need to focus on that because there's a virus out there that will destroy all humanity if we don't check it, it's time to. And we must check it together. This threatens the human race. So we come into this prayer time. We want to pray that God help us to get together, at least on this platform, in this category. We need to work together and stop listening to all the stuff. Uh, the funerals are real, the tears are real, the hurt is real, the pain is real, the sorrow is real, the agony is real. And we're hurting people not just by people dying, but people wishing that I'd have said more to someone who uh, had not taken the vaccine. I'd, that must be just a double whammy on to what is already pain. We're going to be very short today um, because I want to just talk in a way that perhaps will uh, help us to do that. It's prayer time, and I want to pray for families. I want to pray for uh, our kids in school, our young people, because we're losing children now to COVID-19, children under the age of 12 who can't uh, partake in the vaccine process. There's no vaccine for them. They're depending on the adults around them to stay clear as much as possible and do those things that they need to do to ensure that they don't bring the coronavirus home unknowingly, contaminate that child, and the child find themselves uh, hospitalized. And I hate to keep saying that, but we we losing uh, dad, uh, mom, and children in one family now. Uh, that's 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 something we need to think about. And. Uh, Thank God. We thank God. God has, God has God has done what God's going to do. Amen. I thought I'd tell you that. See, see the, I've been thinking about this. The making of a miracle is when God um, suspends the normal time necessary to do something. Amen. Amen. And, and in this um, production of a vaccine in one year, God has suspended the time in production. He's worked a miracle. And all we have to do is go get it. People talk about, I'm having faith in God. I'm waiting on God. The Lord's going to take me. The Lord has provided a way. I'm going to pray. We'll talk about that just a minute. I'm, I'm going to pray. I don't want to be long. I just want you to know that I love you dearly, all of you, my God. I don't want to see anything happen uh, to you. I don't want to be uh, be there. Uh, you can trust God in this thing. Come on, uh, let's pray. There's so many on the prayer list. God, we thank you. We love you, God. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. God, you are worthy. You and you alone are worthy to be praised. 
praise. We glorify you, God, as, as we gather around um, our worship centers at home. Father, I ask you to forgive us because uh, we, we, so many cases, are treating this period just like another TV period, God. And we're not pulling together at home to worship uh, for real in, in, in the worship time. We are treating it like a performance and, and entertainment. That's not what it is, God. I pray. Forgive us, God. Help us to get used to really getting into your presence and focusing on you during our word and worship and, and during our worship on Sunday. Help us, God, to take it serious and, and treat it with, with, with the respect uh, that you deserve as a holy God, as a holy God. You had rules and ways for man to come to you uh, in, in, in your word, focused on you, God. We say thank you now for being so merciful and forgiving us for being so negligent. Have us to know that Abel came to worship right and was blessed. So, God, we say thank you now for an opportunity to enter the homes of each one under the sound of my voice, God, I pray that your mighty blessings of healing in all kinds of ways in every home, healing the marriage, the relationship between parents and children and relatives. God, I pray for healing in the name of Jesus, for healing in the body of Christ, Father, for our church in America has been divided for over 400 years. We can't walk together on any issues, God. We can't face any issues, God. We ask you to help us, God, to do better. Have the conversations in love. C create relationships of respect and trust. So, God, here we are in, in this place. And we, we pray uh, for Sister Misha Cunningham in the loss of a brother, niece, and sister-in-law. God, I know, I know, God, you're able to. Help heal and deliver. Hold of God. Hold her and the family in the very uh, holly of your hand. Keep them in the way that you will have them to go. We say thank you, God. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise, God. I pray for those who have ambivalence about um, the vaccine, God. I say thank you for it. Uh, there's those who attribute it to man, but I say thank you for it. Because who knows where we would be in 10 years, God. God, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus to touch the heart of those who are afraid. Help us not to be angry one with another for one taking it and one not. We say thank you. God, we ask you to help us to work together. Thank you for the miracle of the vaccine, God. Thank you so much for its effectiveness, God. We say thank you. We praise you. We give you glory. Now, God, give all of your people a heart to understand that you are at work. They need, they need to be able to see where you are at work in this situation. We say thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We thank God for you. I, I was saying, um, as it relates to tonight's study, a couple of things I want to look at. First, a review from Sunday's message that's been going in my mind. If my people called by my name would humble themselves, would uh, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, would pray, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. Those four things uh, which require uh, uh, humble means that I recognize that I am not the means for my own future. I don't have the power to push me forward. I can't depend on me humble enough to realize that uh, it's not about me. H humble enough to know that um, I can't depend on me, that I have needs. Lord, Lord, I, I don't care what status you're in. I don't care where you are financially, educationally, uh, with your social position. I don't care. You can't get up in the morning on your own. You slept. Somebody's holding the, the car of your life in the road to be humble enough to realize I have a need. I'm talking to believers now. I need God. I, I didn't. I didn't do this myself. I'm not here. Just think about it. Yeah, I'm not here in and of myself. Humble themselves. Pray. Um, seek my face. Turn for their wicked ways. All these things were necessary. 
God said, then I will heal. If and then. If we do that, then God said, I will heal. If my people, I will, I will do that. I will hear from heaven. Amen. When we come down out of our arrogance, self-righteousness, dependent upon our abilities to have resources. If we recognize that, that we're in a situation, uh, it's, the situation is always true. Amen. Th that, that we have a need. God holds life in the hollow of his hand. So we talked about that on Sunday. If and then. Um, I was talking earlier and thought about a passage in John um, about this miracle, the making of a miracle, how he turned water into wine and he did it instantly right then. In John chapter 2, I believe it is. I'm not going to go there, but John chapter 2, uh, when we think about this, um, the vaccine, we had so much conversation about how fast it was made, um, how normally it takes 10 to 12 years. Let's talk about what's in it, um, um, the government rush rush, and whatever we talked about uh, that gives people, makes them ambivalent, makes them hesitant and all those things. But what about God? What about the God you say you have faith in? The God you say you trust. Amen. God, you say that holds you in the very hollow of your hand. This, this thing was created in miraculous time. Everyone, all of the professionals in the field of epidemiologists, all of them were astounded. That, that, could that be God at work? Your God, the God that you say loves you. Could that be God preparing you or preparing a help for you? Don't be like the man who was in the house when the rain got started and they said it's going to flood. And once the streets got started flooding, uh, you know, once, once the first person came and said it's going to flood, you need to leave this territory. He said, I'm going to trust and depend on the Lord. I'm just going to pray. Then when the streets flooded, a boat came by, knocked on the man's door, says, water's rising, you better come on and go with it. Said, now I'm depending on the Lord, I'm trusting in the Lord. And the water got higher, he got to the top of the house. And uh, a helicopter came and said, man, you better get off. Now I know this is an exaggeration, but at that point, I know anybody should have gotten known better at that point. But anyway, the way the story goes, the man stayed and said, I'm trusting in God, the Lord gonna take care of me. Didn't get in the helicopter, drowned it. He drowned it. Goes to heaven. Complaining, Lord, I was waiting on you, Lord. And the way the story goes, the Lord says to him, say, hey, I sent a street walker by to warn you. You didn't leave. I sent a boat. You wouldn't get in the boat. I sent a helicopter. And you wouldn't catch the helicopter. We got to learn how to see God in situations. And I think we've been unclear because we've been looking at all the distractors, all of the um, distractors about this. So this is a miracle. And many of you will say that it was made too fast. Jesus made wine and... It's a God-sized problem. It requires a God-sized remedy. Trust God in this thing. Let me look at this word for the night. Very short word. Very short word. I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. I believe it is. We want to talk about Matthew chapter 5. And I want to bless those of us who um, are very positive about the vaccine, have had the vaccine, and are thankful and believe that the Lord is at work in the vaccine. Um, Matthew chapter 5. In Matthew chapter 5, this is a very familiar, very familiar story. V verse 1, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gazarene, Gaz Gazarene, 
And when he was come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no not with chains, for he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountain and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thy son of the most high God? I beg you, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. He asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. And there was there near unto the mountain a great herd of swine, pigs feeding. And all the demons besought him, saying, Send us into the demons, to the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirit went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about two thousand, and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the demon, and he had the legion and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind. My, my, my. And they were afraid. My, my. And they saw him, they saw it, and they that saw it told how it befell to him that was possessed with the demon and also concerning the swine. And they began to implore him to depart out of their border. Notice this is the part I want to go to. And when he was coming to the boat, he that had been possessed with the demon implored him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus permitted him not, but says unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them what great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish or tell it in Decapolis, ten cities, what great things Jesus had done for him and all men marvel. I want to talk to you just for a minute and tell you it's time to tell others. It is time to tell others what God has done for you. It, 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 it's time out for shaking our head and, and saying harsh things. It's time out for for rumors and gossip about this issue. It's time to tell our loved ones of what great things God has done for us in this hour, in this time. It's time for us uh, to position ourselves, to get healed ourselves, and get help ourselves, and then call and tell others of what great things the Lord has done for us. The Lord has, has worked to work uh, for us. We This man, this, this man, would be considered mentally challenged in Mark 5. He, you know he has a mental problem because he makes his address in the graveyard. Now be careful because there are a lot of folk who live in the graveyard. Every time you talk to them, they're way, they're, they're back, they're, 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 they're in some dead, some dead stuff, and they're bit about something that happened to them, something that happened as it relates to how they, 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 they a lot of folk make their um, address in, in the graveyard. So, so, so he, he was, he was mental yet. And then he was suicidal. You notice if you check the text out early, he 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 was cutting himself and hurting himself. You know, he he was cutting and hurting himself. He was suicidal. He had a 
problem there. And then, and then he was uh, scary. He was making up noises. He, he was loud. He was vulgar. Uh, he was disrespectful. And if you notice in, in, in the text, um, no one could handle him. Now, there are some folk maybe on your block, maybe not on your block. You know the block that they're on, some folk you can't stop to talk to. They're always using vulgar, loud, talking about nothing. In fact, some of the people who are very influential in the anti-vax are this sort of people. They're coming up with all kinds of ridiculous, non-sensual, non-sensible rationale for, you know, not trying to... Um, partake of the miracle that's been prepared by the hands, I believe, of God. Listen to me when I tell you this. Mm. And, 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 and there are others listening to them, bright people, people who uh, should be able to look at data and, and facts and statistics and weigh them for themselves, yet they listen to someone who makes the address in the graveyard uh, do um, conversations uh, uh, loud and talking about nothing and hurting themselves in, in this passage. But and, and the reason why we shouldn't be critical and down on and, and, and not caring of those people because this man scared everyone, but Jesus wasn't afraid of him. And when he saw Jesus come in, the Bible says in the text that this man that we would have called a crazy man, when he saw Jesus, he worshiped Jesus. When, when he saw the Lord, he worshiped the Lord. And I, I would tell you that if we walk in, with Christ, if we walk in the Holy Spirit, if our behavior, our conduct, and attitude, and our caring toward others is Christ-like, folk will see something different in you. Now, let me just go on and say this to you. Now, he he worshiped Christ. He didn't scare Christ. Christ was not afraid of him. I stopped to tell you, he that is in you is greater than he that's in the world. And I, will, I know people get anxious and angry with you and upset and talk about you can't tell me nothing. You don't know what's going on. This government is doing this. I don't trust. Do you trust God? In, in, in this text, I want to notice you to notice that the man was healed. And the next thing I want you to notice, because he got his healing, uh, the town folk came out and asked him to leave, asked Jesus to leave. Some people don't want to be well. Someone don't, some people don't want what's going to fix them to stay in town, fix you to stay in town. They want to get rid. They want to beat it down and talk about it and criticize. Some people don't want you to hear how much the Lord Jesus Christ loves you in spite of your ups, down, and whatever, in spite of your past. God loves you. Some people don't want you to know that. But it's time for us to go it's, go tell others. And what happens is that Jesus decides to oblige them. He's come forward and done what he's intended to do. He's getting into the boat. And the man he healed, the man that everyone had called for years, a crazy man, wanted to go with Jesus. But Jesus did not see anything beneficial in that. Jesus told the man, no, I need you to stay here. And I need you to go and tell your family and your friends uh, what good things God has done for you. And so my brothers and sisters, I come up with this very short message. I need you to get on your phone and call your ambivalent, your, your hesitant, your, your scared loved ones, relatives and friends who declared that they're not going to get in this march to help all of us overcome this virus. The Lord told me to tell you it's time to you start talking to your loved ones and your friends and those close around you and those who are ambivalent and let's, let's just sit there and labor with them. So I'm praying for you because this is not a drug that is a mystery. This drug is a miracle. A a a amen. You look at the data, you look at the stats. I believe it's time for us in the house of God, the families of God, to start calling everyone who, hey, baby, have you taken it? That's what I'm going Did you take so-and-so? You haven't, haven't taken it? Let's talk about why you haven't. Let's work our way through it. Sugar, love you. Don't want to be at your funeral. I don't want to look. Let's talk about this. Instead of being angry with people, one side or the other, be understanding. 
be loving. Jesus told this man who the people he's about to go talk to are the ones that call him crazy. They're the ones who put him in chains. They, 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 they're the ones who are glad he was living in a graveyard away from them. That's, that's where the trouble is, the dead stuff in the graveyard. They wouldn't come by to try to refresh, revive anything. They were afraid, but Jesus went. Jesus got worship out of the graveyard. Yeah, because he knew there was a door in the graveyard. He was going to use it shortly after that because, you know, they hung him on the cross, nailed him in his hands and nailed him in the feet, took him to the graveyard. But Jesus knew that there was a door in the graveyard. Amen. And it's time for us. He tells the man who wants to go with him, no, you go tell your friends and your family what good things the Lord has done for you. Amen. That's the word. That's the word. That's the word I want to encourage you. Go, go tell your family, your loved ones, your friends, people you work with. Get on the nerve. Tell them I love you too much. It's going to bother me. I don't want to be crying about you. I don't want to miss you. I don't want to see you in this condition or that condition. I'm scared. It's a miracle. I, I see it as God's miracle. Those who are criticizing and those who are negative. Nobody but the Lord. God, we thank you. We love you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, listen, if you want to join the St. Luke Christian Church, be here with us in word and worship. Be part of this great family of God who's worked all throughout this uh, pandemic and we did not we were never paralyzed didn't park our praise we kept partaking participating in the worship that god deserved amen it's different but it's real we thank god for you if you want to join us it's kind of late for baptism you've never been baptized repeat after me so lord i'm a sinner i, I need a savior I accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my dead, buried, and resurrected Savior. I ask Jesus to come into my heart only as his child. Amen. Oh God, I welcome you to the household of faith, to the arms and love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go to the website, stlukechristianchurch.org. Follow to join us, sign up, and we'll reach out to you to take you in. If you're already um, a Christian, you just don't have a house in this area, a family, church family. We want to be your church family. St. Luke Christian Church, God is with us, seeking to say, you go to the website, give us your information, and we'll reach out to you. Listen, as I say, listen, God is with us, seeking to say, don't panic in this pandemic and things may get worse before they get better. But I think it's time for us, children of God, it's time for us to start being aggressive and calling our loved ones and our family. Jesus told them, man, now, now, they had called him crazy. They had rumored about him and gossiped about him and whatever, whatever about him. Jesus gave him an assignment. Go and tell your family what good things God has done for you. You all listen till we meet again. Stay safe. Be blessed.